going to use this table to determine a rate law and the balanced equation. I made a mess of it up here, but I've rewritten it here. For example, three moles of A plus one mole of B combined to make products. And we want to determine the rate law. Remember, the rate law cannot be determined from the balanced equation. So we've got to run some experiments where we vary the initial concentrations of A and B in a controlled fashion so that we only have one variable per experiment. So our initial experiment, we have A and B initial concentrations to be 0.1. And then in the second experiment, we keep A the same and we double B and measure the rate. Then we double A in experiment three while we keep B the same. So if we control the initial concentrations and if we're able to measure a rate, then we can determine the rate law for any reaction. And since these numbers are easy, what we're going to be looking at, all rate laws are going to look like this. Rate equals the rate constant K times one reactant raised to a power times the other reactant raised to a power. So we're going to look for the powers M and N once we find the exponents. Then we're going to pick one reaction or one experiment and solve for K. And since these numbers are easy, we can probably do this one in our head. So if we're looking for the M value, the power on A, we're going to look at when A varies and B stays the same. So we're going to look at, uh, I'll write this down. So we have to keep B constant and let uh, reactant A vary. So if we look at that, that means we're going to use experiment 3 to 1. So A doubles, and the rate, that's where B stays the same, and the rate doubles. So when the concentration of A doubles, that double means we're going to write a 2 to the M, and then we see that the rate doubles. A doubles, and the rate doubles doubles. So just from looking, we can see that the order or the exponent on A is equal to 1. If we want to see what varying B does to the reaction, we have to look at the two experiments where A is the same. And that's going to be experiment 2 to 1. And so now we're looking for the power in. So here we have to keep A constant so that we only have one reactant's concentration varying. And if we look, we double A, or, or B, excuse me, so the concentration of B doubles, so that means 2, that doubling means the ratio is 2, 0.2 over 0.1 would be 2, to the N equals if we ratio this number to this number, that equals 1. So, in other words, we can double B and the rate does not change. So that means N equals 0. And our rate law is rate equals KA to the first power B the zero power, but that means B would not affect the rate. We're going to end up seeing that this results in a first order rate law. We cannot tell by looking at the data. We have to solve for the powers first, and then once we solve for the powers, then we're going to pick one experiment, plug in this value for the rate, so our rate is here. We'll plug that in, and we'll solve for uh, K when we plug in the appropriate value for A. So now to solve for K, rate 
the rate is 4 times 10 to the negative fifth equals k times 0 0.100 to the first power. And I got these numbers from here. Here's the rate. Here's the initial concentration of the rate. Just plug those in. And if we divide both sides by 0 0.100, then k is equal to 4 times 10 to the minus 4. So our rate law is this. Rate equals 4.0 times 10 to the minus 4 times a to the first power. Our rate constant is here. And we happen to get a first order rate law. If we felt like going through the calculus, let me move this camera just a little bit. Uh, if we change the rate to delta A delta T equals, I'm going to just rewrite a K. The disappearance of A means that's going to be negative. So we could change this to DA DT equals negative K A. Rearrange these terms and have 1 over A DA equals negative kt, and integrate this between the initial concentration and the final concentration, and that k is a constant, so that comes out of the integral sign. We integrate the time from 0 to time t. So if we do this, we'll end up with the natural log of a evaluated at a naught and a of t equals negative kt. So we rearrange this and we get the natural log of the concentration of A at any time t minus the natural log of the initial concentration equals negative kt. And the form we usually use in the book is we just put this term on the other side. So the ln of A at any time is equal to negative kt plus the natural log of the initial concentration. So this equation does not look anything like this equation here. But those are the same thing. This is just a matter of doing some calculus, which I didn't really do all of that. Uh, and this is a linear equation. It fits the form y equals mx plus d. So if we were to graph the data, if we were given data, we have time, and the Y stands for the natural log of A. If we were given these concentrations, we would plug in the natural log, and we would end up getting a linear equation. So T is L1, if we're going to insert this into the calculator. The natural log of A would be L2. When we enter these values in and solve for the linear equation, we'll get an R squared value equal close to 0.99. That would tell us that this data is first order. So first order data will give us this graph. And this graph means we have first order data. The other thing that we could do for first order is solve for when when a over t or a of t a when this ratio is one half when half of our initial concentration is uh, gone so we could plug this in substitute those values solve for t and we would have the half life equals 0.693 over the rate constant k. So if we happen to get first order, a first order reaction, this is the first order instantaneous expression. We can solve for any concentration as long as we know the time and the initial concentration and the rate constant. Or we could solve for how long it took time to get
get from this concentration to that concentration. Or we could solve for the half-life. If we're given a half-life, we can rearrange the half-life equation and solve for k. So the rate constant shows up uh, in the half-life expression. That's the same k as we see here.